Hey everybody. So, uh, as a very rare twist of events, I'm actually in the front of the camera right now. I'm shorter in real life, if you can't tell. Um, so today we're in Powers Auditorium in Youngstown, Ohio, um, which is my hometown. And uh, I just thought that I would take you guys along for a gig that we're doing. So this is a rare one for me where I'm actually playing drums and I have very little to do with the audio, but the audio rig that we brought in is so cool that I figured you guys would like it. So before we start, here's the theater. Um, this is one of the coolest theaters that I, it, this is the gold standard in my opinion for theaters. It's so cool. Um, this was actually a Warner Brothers theater in the early 1900s in Youngstown, Ohio. This is Powers, now the Dior Performing Arts Center. So I used to come see symphony shows here when I was a kid. It's pretty cool to be, to be doing a gig here. So um, let me introduce you to Mike, who's the music director for the show. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey, Mike. YouTube, YouTube, Mike. Now What's that you up, guys YouTube? know each other. What's up, fam? Um, <laughs> so before we dig into the audio on this show, I do want to show you Mike's rig because I think what he's up to here is really, really cool. So, cool. Mike, do you want to explain your rack of doom Yeah, over there? totally, totally. So for this rig, we I decided I wanted to bring – I'm also from Youngstown as well. I wanted to bring in all of the creature comforts for a working pit setup so that Monitor World would have to do – absolutely nothing with us essentially we could just come in and be self-contained so to that end Adam if you want to come over around this side this this rack right here is a traveling rack and in this rack through the chain link fence <laughs> <laughs> I've got 32 channels of ART uh, uh, s3 three-way split uh, in the front of it there's another there's another 16 over there so there's 32 total channels and then I've got a presonus 32r uh, stage box mixer series 3 in there uh, I've got a bunch of them, and I put them in all my integration kits. I just love them because they're small, they work, and they're ABV. Uh, also in the rack, I have an Audio-Technica dual-channel 6000 receiver in there that works on RF manager. Um, we also have it, all of my racks I put in uh, integrated switching in, and I, we always travel with those uh, Ubiquiti Unify U6LRs in there uh, for just kind of long-range control. So when we come into a space, we put everybody on our network, essentially, so front of house and... Uh, uh, monitor world come into my switch and router um, we're double NAT but it's it's totally fine it works for us and then up here I've s in in bigger configurations when we move in I've got I've got rackable versions but I have a p I've got a 16 channel switch down in here and then I've got an 8 channel PoE and an 8 channel non powered here uh, the PoE switch controls a few s uh, separate things this is on on IP control this is not AVB we're on the control side uh, this this guy runs out to, I have a Canon CRN 300 4K camera that's PTZ. Uh, it's a Visca protocol cam, but also does like NDI and SRT. Uh, for this show, we're just doing it on plain old uh, uh, 3G SDI. So I'm powering it through here, and I'm also using that to get uh, control information down. It's also a streaming camera. When I go into places, I just hit start on the streaming so that it just, I archive every last second we're in the building to my YouTube channel unlisted so that I can like review problems later, or try and see like how it sounded, things like that. Um, and for the show, if you want to come around this way, Adam, I've got, um, we use that PTZ camera for, for confidence monitoring essentially so that I can see what's going on in the stage. And this is a Blackmagic uh, Video Assist 12G SDI. They're amazing. They run two cards and an SSD. And I can record the show each night just by tapping it, review it later. Uh, moving further around here, so essentially every input for the band hits my split first and then we come the direct outs of the splits into the house two-way split and then Monitor World and FOH gets it. The way I have my split configured right now, Monitor World gives us Phantom. I can flip it around and go the other way, but that's just kind of the way I roll. So everything comes and hits my PreSonus 32R. I then make 16 aux sends, which then I route via ABB through those PreSonus SW5E switches to these Earmix 16Ms. They're fantastic. I build my show file before we get here so that when we show up, all we do is we, we plug everything into the holes, we set the gain, it's automatically routed. These things all remember who they are night to night. They're labeled, they're good to go so that when we're, when we're off to the races, no one needs anything from Monitor World. It just works. Um, I've got the control app on my iPad so that I can, you know, I can dial things in, we can high pass things. Um, everything just kind of works. Uh, it, it's kind of amazing. So that's 32 channels. And then I do another eight channels of it, only on my side that we don't send out to them uh, of kind of creature comforts for, for music directing, which would be, uh, it's, it's an ears pit. So 
I've got a, a shout mic here, and it's literally how we can all communicate within the group. Billy on the drums has the same thing as well. And we also have, uh, there's a QLab computer, and also I run Click for the show. It's not, it's not like Ableton Click. It, it's old school musical theater Click. I've just got a guy on a metronome app that just turns the click on and off when I ask him to. Um, and it just kind of all works. Moving into the keyboard rig, PreSonus going into, or no, I'm sorry, a, a, a Kurzweil going into a main stage uh, rig. Both of the keyboard parts are on main, sta main stage rigs, the original Broadway programming. It's kind of great because you can, um, you can map all of your controls. So like as I'm playing, all I have to do is hit the keys down here and everything changes on the screen. We're labeled the song and the measure within each song. So as I'm playing, you just hit the button and advance to the next one. And then over here, I've just got another confidence monitor to show me exactly what's going on on the main stage rig. In this top rack, this rack I bring to every last thing that I work on. This is my comms rack. I have, I have that Sonnet uh, double iMac or uh, double Mac mini mount here. And I roll with just two of the, of the original super cheap M1 minis. The first one I use for like QLab, Companion for Stream Deck, things like that, any automation things I need to do. And the second one I use for specifically uh, running a DAW. So right now I'm screen shared into one of these machines and I'm just multi-tracking the show each night because I can't because uh, we're, we're grabbing that via USB, but I can also grab it via, via ADB directly into the Ethernet ports, or I can get it a different way through this amazing device from Apsis called the Multiverter. Um, the Multiverter essentially does ADAT, MADI Optical, MADI Coax, MADI Twisted Pair, AES-50, Dante, uh, Dante AES-67, back and forth. And you can also do cross patching and double patching. So I, if we were working in a Yamaha environment, I could go Dante, to MADI and to AVB. So it's, it, what this serves for me is essentially, I can live in AVB land because of PreSonus on anything. So I can essentially turn my PreSonus rig into a MADI rig, into a Dante rig, and vice versa. It's, it's amazing, it's like the best Swiss Army knife. Um, other interesting things that everybody asks about, this is a Clearcom RM702. It's a, it's a remote station for two-channel Clearcom. I also have a power supply in case we need to supply that. But this is just general communication with the house. It's great to have it right here. And then up here, this is an RME um, uh, AVB tool. This lets me get AVB to MADI, which gets me into here. And this is a Hollyland two-wire to four-wire converter. So I come out of this Clearcom device right here to this, and this just changes over Clearcom uh, what we call two-wire COM to XLR, essentially. You're able to do the input and the output via XLR, so I can come from here and I can patch it into my PreSonus if we all want to hear the COM, or I can patch it through Dante onto one of these devices into our Unity intercom system so that uh, if this were a longer installation, everyone can communicate with the house from their phones, essentially. All of the staff's phones would act as COM as well, and if I'm off-site, I can also listen to the production and also assist in calling if there are problems. Whew, that's the rig. Did I miss anything, Billy? <laughs> no, I just wanted you to talk about the multiverter. That was that was a new one for me. That's I I want one of those boxes in Definitely a bad cool. bad way now. Oh, and the other thing that's fun for theater <laughs> is this guy right here. This guy right here is remote conductor vision. So I've got this little teeny tiny. You can't use the good ones. They have to be old fashioned. Super cheap. Kind of looks like a Dino Trail cam, but that's how they can follow me uh, when you're not in a pit situation. Um, it, it lets me communicate with the actors in that direction. So we have all of the communication as if we were doing this traditionally, but we can be anywhere, which is kind of neat. I use the same thing when, when you can't even be on the stage and you're you know, in the other theater or in the basement when it's all remote applications. This whole setup just kind of works that way. Kind of standard for Broadway. This is kind of like a Broadway light setup. Yeah, that's what I'm up to. Thanks, Mike. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's um, let's check out. So one of the things that we're doing with this show that I think is actually very cool is that um, we do have a traditional monitor rig set up for the show. There's a monitor engineer with an SC48 off stage, and what he's doing is he's actually submixing the band. So because there are so many input channels on this, as far as as dialogue, so because it's a theater gig, um, front of house is mixing everybody on a on a Countryman E6 head mic. So the front of house mixer is so busy following the script and bringing mics up for dialogue. So um, if any of you have ever seen somebody 
uh, line mix a show, which it's called in Broadway World, you should you should check out some videos on that because if you are used to doing music and not used to doing theater, watching somebody line mix a show is is insanity. Like it's it blows your mind. You should totally check that out. So front of house is so busy with doing that. We have another engineer on stage that is sending uh, front of house just a left right send of the band. So let's go check that out. So they're not here yet. We'll introduce you to Ben maybe if we uh, if we have enough time. So. Over here, this is, it's actually a D&B um, V-Rig at front of house. It's ground stacked on the stage. I don't know what the subs are. I know they're D&B, they're but they're, they're on the floor. So this is the amp rack. These are all D80s in here. Um, and then this is, this is the distro that they bring in. We'll just pretend that case says LM on it, you know. <laughs> um, so this is, um, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm going too fast. We have a limited amount of time to do this, so somebody who already talks too fast like me is going on, on hyperdrive. Um, so this is, this is monitor land. This is ben, Ben's world over here. Um, like I said, he's mixing. So his whole job is the, um, basically for monitoring on stage, there's just some side fills that are up that are up hung from the grid so that they can just get a little bit of vocal reinforcement because as you can imagine, if you have 20 to 30 lav mics underneath speakers, it's not gonna end well, so. There, there's just a bit of reinforcement. So this is Ben's world. Um, like I said, SE48 is doing the band mix, um, and this is just what he's up to, just as far as keeping all of the um, the uh, the mics organized. So, uh, also infrastructure thing. They have a cool little um, little. Um, that's the main split. So everything comes into the into the pit world over W1 lines, and they just have little 12 channel breakout boxes everywhere. Okay. So let me introduce you to Ben. So Ben is our side monitor mixer who is handling monitors for the stage, but he's also doing the band mix and sending that to front of house. So Ben, this is YouTube. Hello, YouTube, everybody. this is Ben. Uh, just explain what you got going on and just yeah. maybe poke around in your show file and just show some EQs yeah, sure. and effects or anything that you're using. Uh, so we got Avid or DigiDesign S48 going on. I've got a couple channels. We've got drums, keys, the SPD. All going through here, uh, individual channels. Uh, I've also got all the vocal microphones for my own reference. And so like if uh, somebody has like an RF issue or a connection issue on their microphone, I can kind of solo that and see if it's a issue that I can solve quickly or whatnot. And uh, so yeah, I can go through. I've got some basic plugins, you know, not a lot going on, but just some stuff generic that's kind of a wild EQ but it's what you got to do sometimes you know <laughs> uh, but yeah so I mean that's about it I'm mixing mostly on headphones uh, I've went out front to monitor during the rehearsals and stuff like that but otherwise I'm just kind of making small moves even though you know everything's mostly set already but yeah cool. thanks Ben yeah no problem. <laughs> sorry we didn't mean to interrupt too much no you're good <laughs> let's go check out other stuff <laughs> So, um, for those of you not familiar with Rent, this was a big learning experience for me. I didn't really know much about the show despite working adjacent to it for so long, but it's basically set in Alphabet City in New York um, before it was really, really gentrified. So the, the look of the stage is scaffolding. So this whole stage set, which is really cool, is actually um, construction scaffolding. So we're in, in underneath the scaffolding. So some of the things that we have to deal with are like actual support bars down here to keep it all together. So there, it's a six person band and it's tight in there to say the least. So um, coming into, so there's two guitar players, both play acoustic and electric. Um, you can see the back end of Mike's rig on there. There's a pile of AVB switches down there. Um, there's, you know, the, the, the snake head that starts to get uh, inputs into the master split. So each guitar player has a pedal board. This is an all DI'd show, so both of them are doing, are, are doing modeling. Um, and then this is actually um, the, uh, the, the ear mix unit that we're using with Personas, which is cool. Um, Mike had everything laid out for us, so I'll just give you a list off of the channels here. We have 16 choices here, so it's what you would expect, kick, snare, overhead left, overhead right. Uh, keys one, which is Mike's board, that's in stereo. Um, there's a mono line for each of the guitars just in the ears, so it's electric one, acoustic one, electric two, or acoustic, uh, electric two, acoustic two, keys one, and then bass, you know, and then we have our talk back so that, you know, Mike and I can talk to each other. There's a click track in there, um, you know, so we can, we can all 
exist in that world and not have to talk to a monitor engineer because as you can imagine that could be pretty pretty clumsy so those are actually a, a, amazing i always forget how cool those are because i'm never on this side of the stage but they're awesome um i guess let's go uh let's go look at well actually hold on <laughs> let me switch cam let me switch positions with the camera guy and adam who is the bass player who's shooting this can tell you about his rig so stand by <laughs> hey guys i'm adam i'm the bass player for this production of rent longtime friend of Billy and Mike, who you met earlier. Uh, let's come into Baseland and I'll show you what's going on. We have to step very carefully because this is a crowded pit. <laughs> and we don't want to knock over any guitars on our way. <laughs> so we have a very specific order that we all climb in here every night. <laughs> I always have to go first because uh, James and DJ, our two guitar players, are normally blocking the path that I just used to get in here. Uh, but here we are in Baseland, um, right in the center of the pit. I have my two basses to the left. I have my Sadowski five string. That is my number one that I play on 99% of my gigs. And I also have my new Fender fretless bass, which I got just for this gig, actually. It's been a lot of fun to play, and there's a lot of gratuitous chorus fretless moments in this show which I have been particularly enjoying. It's not enough Adam, more chorus. It, we need more. <laughs> um, you heard about the ears mixer, I've got mine right here dialed in just like I like it, saving it every night and very nicely labeled. I don't know who did that but I do appreciate me, the label. Yeah. <laughs> Handsome as the day is long. That's a USB P-Touch labeler so you don't have to use the keypad, you can do it on your computer. Beautiful. Yep. All right, so for all of our guitar and bass nerds out there, what's on your pedal board, Adam? My pedal board? Let's get some light down here. It's pretty bare bones for this show. Um, I'll start at the end. The end of my signal chain is this Capo uh, DI, which I've been using for the past couple of years. Um, a small pedal maker out of... I can't remember the name of their town. They're in northern Italy. Uh, Yad Freer, really awesome preamp that I love. Really versatile overdrives. You can get really clean, really good sounds, and the onboard EQ is really awesome. Um, I'm also using this in lieu of a, a channel switcher. I'm just using the DI as my mute button. So someone uh, was going to bring you a channel switcher and they forgot. <laughs> uh, That's someone with me. <laughs> we'll keep that off the record. Um, so that's the end, and then working back, I have my my boss bass chorus standard, and before that, I have my delay reverb, which I use on some of the fretless stuff, uh, just for a little extra tastefulness. Awesome. Yeah, pretty basic. Um, pretty base. Pretty yeah. basic. <laughs> I'm reading off an iPad, which is not in place right now, but that goes here, um, and that's my whole world. I uh, have my front front row seat to mic right here so any of the little you know the little moments in the show that it's a uh, very recitative we're uh, right here together which i really appreciate oh look at you guys together like a family the only thing i don't like about this setup and i will go on record with this is i can't see billy because he's directly behind me behind this giant plexiglass Aww. wall that's unfortunate yeah. no i'm actually but a fan of the plexiglass it lets me play drums so <laughs> They've, they've got me back here behind this cage. I can see him. He looks the same. I can <laughs> yeah. <find Yeah>. him. <laughs> same as he always looked. I need to get a better joke. I always just make a short joke, but you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I guess let's go take a look at drums, and then we will, we will leave you guys. Let's do it. All right. Let's go check out drums. So be careful. There's, so there's all of the, the feed lines to come into the pit are all underneath here. So... We have Keys 2 here. I, I just would like to point out that someone brought Evan, our Keys 2 player, a rose last night. So he does have a rose resting for him on his keys, which I think is very, very, just very cool. <laughs> we didn't get flowers. Evan got flowers. So I'm going to try my best to show you in here. It's pretty, even as a, a small person, it is tight back here. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Rent is a rock opera 
you know, so it's supposed to have big drums and big guitars. So if you're looking at a traditional Broadway kind of thing that would be piano driven mostly, this is very, very guitar driven, which is fun because I get to play a gigantic rock drum kit for this show. So um, this is a Tama Star Classic Birch kit. So the kick drum is a 24 by 18 kick drum, which is a monster. Um, and in the spirit of the 90s, I have a 13 by 12 rack tom, a 16 by 16 floor tom, and I also have this drum workshop uh, pancake drum, which is a 20 inch drum that's like two inches deep. And it sounds terrible in real life like that, but through the PA, it sounds like a giant analog 808. Um, I've, it's a six and a half by 14 birch snare, so I hate when my snare drum matches the drum kit, but alas, we, we, we have it. It's nice and dead so that you can uh, get that very nice, dead, like, ADAT, DA-88, 90s sound. Um, and Peisty cymbals all around. So this, uh, this, this setup actually has a lot of SPD, so it's, it's actually written in the music that they want it to be digital samples. So there's a lot of stuff that's like um, a vibra slap, which is hilarious every time. It makes me laugh every single time we hit that. There's, you know, congas and things like that. So um, a lot of that happens simultaneously with the analog, you know, the acoustic drum kit. So I have this kind of weird setup where the rack tom is over here so I can play um, I can play the pad. Uh, as far as mics go, there's a 91 in the kick. We're using a 609 on the snare drum so that it can fit in underneath the, um, uh, the, the SPD. There's a 604 on the toms, and there's a beta 52 on the... Um, pancake drum with um, KSM 32s as overhead so this is my world and uh, I think that probably wraps this video up so I'm gonna try to get one uh, a shot of us playing so you can see it all in in real life because it's it's a cool view to, to walk, look out through a chain link fence and you can see Billy cam and it's pretty gratuitous that's uh, maybe even uh, planned that Mike and Adam and I are all on the same on the same side so we're hanging out but uh, well maybe we'll check in with you at the show maybe not either way thanks for stopping by Everyone say goodbye. 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 <laughs> wow. Goodbye. Sad. I pan on real Sad. quick on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and wow, wouldn't it be crazy if there's that? a second guitar player in this pit? <laughs> 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 Too bad we'll never know. Sean, you wake up <laughs>